Amillennialism believes that the 1,000 years of Revelation 20 is a figurative term for Christ's present kingdom on earth and in heaven. As such, it might be more accurately called now millennialism because it believes that the millennium is now. Amillennialists believe that Revelation 20 begins with Christ's first coming to earth. By his death and resurrection, at that first coming, he bound and cast out the devil so that his impact on the nations is far less than it was prior to Christ's first coming. So Christ's death and resurrection and the binding of the devil begins the New Testament church age and the millennial kingdom on earth and in heaven, which will last until the second coming of Christ. The signs of the times appear to greater or lesser degrees throughout this period. Famines, wars, earthquakes, persecution, apostasy, tribulation can be found throughout that time. But towards the end, these signs will climax and crescendo. Most amillennialists believe that there can be great revivals from time to time throughout that period. And some amillennialists believe that the Jews will be converted to Christ at some point. Near the very end of time, Satan will be released from the present restraints he is under. The signs of the times will reach their climax. The Antichrist and his allies will be on the verge of destroying the church in the last great battle Armageddon. But then Christ will return to win that battle, deliver his people, rescue his church, destroy Antichrist and cast the devil into the bottomless pit. That's followed by the one resurrection of all the dead and one judgment of all at which unbelievers will be consigned to hell while believers in Christ will be welcomed into the eternal kingdom. If you want more information on amillennialism, see my ebook End Times Q&A at my blog Head, Heart, Hand. Postmillennialism believes that the 1000 years of Revelation 20 is a figurative term for a future golden age of Christianity on the earth. Let's look at the timeline of postmillennialism. We start with Christ's first coming, his death and resurrection. This started the New Testament church age, during which the gospel does make some progress in the world. Many postmillennialists place the signs of the times of Matthew 24 and Revelation in the past, around the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. At some future time, Revelation 20 will begin. Satan will be bound in a way he has not been before. And a golden age of Christianity will begin on the earth. This is the millennial kingdom. Some believe that Israel, or the majority of Jews, will also be converted to Christ then, which will result in even greater blessing to the church. At the very end, there may be a smaller version of the signs of the times, as Satan is briefly released, resulting in the battle of Armageddon. Most postmillennialists minimise these signs and this war because they don't want to see the golden age ending on an anticlimactic note. At that point, Christ will return in triumph, his second coming. He will win the last battle, resurrect all the dead, and judge all the living and the dead. Followed by the eternal kingdom, the new heavens and the new earth for his people. For more details on postmillennialism, see my ebook End Times Q and A at my blog Head Heart Hand.
Historic premillennialism believes that after the end time signs, including the Great Tribulation, Christ will return to earth to bind Satan, resurrect his people, and reign on earth for 1,000 years. Here's the historic premillennialism timetable. We begin with Christ's first coming, his death and resurrection. This begins the New Testament church age. The signs of the times of Matthew 24 and Revelation occur throughout the New Testament church age to one degree or another, but they get especially bad near the end. Just before the end, there'll be two great events, Israel converted and the Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation will climax with the terrible battle of Armageddon. Then Christ will return to earth. He'll win that battle and raise all dead believers. He'll bind Satan and begin his millennial kingdom. 1,000 years of reigning on earth with his people. Near the very end, Satan will be released for a short time. Then there will be the second resurrection of all believers who died in the millennial age, together with all the wicked of all ages. There will then be the final judgment, after which the eternal kingdom will begin with the new heavens and the new earth. For more information on premillennialism, see my ebook End Times Q and A at my blog, Head Heart Hand. Like classic or historic premillennialism, dispensational premillennialism believes that Christ will return before the millennium. But it's more complicated in its timeline than historic premillennialism. Let's take a look at it. We begin with Christ's first coming, which starts the New Testament church age. The next major event on the horizon is not the signs of the times, but what is called the parousia, coming of Christ for his church. This is not the second coming because Christ does not come all the way to the earth. Rather, he raptures the living believers and resurrects dead New Testament believers who will all meet him in the air, pass through the New Testament church judgment before being invited to the seven-year marriage supper of the Lamb. So you see there there is a coming, inverted commas, a resurrection and a judgment. The seven-year tribulation period then begins on earth and it starts well with many in Israel being converted. But halfway things start going badly. The signs of the times appear, natural and spiritual disasters and sufferings, and it climaxes with the great tribulation sufferings at the hand of Antichrist and his armies. But once that seven-year period is completed, then we have the Battle of Armageddon. Christ then returns to earth with his church. And this is the real second coming, often called the revelation of Christ or the apocalypsis. In this, Christ comes all the way to the earth. He wins Armageddon, destroys Antichrist and his forces. He then resurrects tribulation martyrs and Old Testament saints. And the judgment of the nations will then take place. That's sometimes called the sheep goats judgment. Again, notice that triad of coming, resurrection and judgment. Christ then binds Satan and the millennial kingdom begins on earth with Christ reigning from Jerusalem for 1,000 blessed years. However, 
At the very end, Satan is briefly released to lead the hordes of Gog and Magog against the church. But Christ comes in fiery judgment on these enemies and casts Satan into the bottomless pit. There will then be the resurrection of all the wicked dead, together with those saints who died in the millennial period. And that brings us to the great white throne judgment. You'll see this is the third group of coming, resurrection and judgment. So there are three comings, as it were, three resurrections and three judgments. Then begins the new heavens and the new earth. So basically dispensational premillennialism teaches that Christ's second coming will occur in four phases. You've got Christ's rapture at his parousia coming, Christ's revelation at his apocalypse is coming, Christ's reign over the millennial kingdom, and then Christ's renewal, the new heavens and the new earth, which is the eternal kingdom.